News First, News Live with Faraz Shaukat Ali. It is said that music is the universal language of humankind. Good morning and welcome to Newsline. My name is Sonali Wanikabadwage. Uh, joining us uh, this morning are two of Australia's leading classical musicians. Let's say a very good morning to them. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. So we're here with Slava Gregorian and Sharon Dreper. It's fantastic to see you here in Sri Lanka. Lovely uh, to be here. Tell us what brings you here. Well, um, we're here to help celebrate the 70th anniversary of bilateral relations between between Australia and Sri Lanka um, and uh, I myself am half Sri Lankan my mother was born here in Colombo um, so they thought that would be a nice little connection for us to come and do two small performances as part of that Slava you play the guitar and you've traveled um, extensively uh, not just locally but also internationally tell us a bit about uh, your career so far well I uh, mostly work with with my brother nowadays he's uh, nine years younger than me and also a guitarist and we we tour together uh, most of the time as you mentioned uh, a lot around Australia but we also have uh, many tours internationally every every year um, the guitars are the classical guitar is a strange instrument because it uh, it doesn't have a, a home in a uh, professional uh, chamber ensemble or an orchestra, uh, so you very much have to be proactive and, and create your own working opportunities. And you know we're very lucky that we, we record a lot of uh, music and um, uh, luckily have a have, have a great audience that uh, that keeps on wanting to come to performances. Sharon, you've been the cellist at uh, the Australian String Quartet since 2013. Tell mm -hmm. us a bit about this. Uh, well, for me, it's I think it's the best job that I'm ever going to have in my life. It's incredible. Uh, the String Quartet is based in Adelaide, Australia, and the organisation has actually been running for about 30 years already, uh, and I joined in 2013. And we're we're paid to do nothing but play chamber music to rehearse and perform. We do three national tours, three tours around Australia and all the major cities and we do a lot of regional touring in, in country Australia as well and on top of that we try and go overseas once or twice every year. So this year we're going to Vienna, um, actually sorry not Vienna, we're going to Venice and also we're going uh, on a large tour around Canada and North America later in the year. So it's it's absolutely wonderful to be able to travel to so many different places. And incidentally, uh, the two of you uh, got married last month. Yes. So how, how, how has it been, I mean, uh, being married to the person you love and doing what you love? Well, it's a great joy. We wish we could play together, play music together more, more often. Um, uh, Sharon's quartet is incredibly busy and I'm often, you know, on the road with, with my brother as well. So we, we try and, you know, perform and and work on projects on the the few weeks here and there that we have every every year and um, this this particular week we're very lucky to uh, to actually be in Sri Lanka so I think we should run. start right now yeah yeah sure so your first piece okay th this is a, a piece from Spain mm. uh, it's called Recuerdos de la Alhambra which means uh, memories of the Alhambra uh, the Alhambra is a beautiful palace in the city of Granada okay. in Spain uh, in mm. Spain and uh, it was composed by uh, Tariga
that was absolutely beautiful how do you see the power of music in bringing together people it's a universal language how does this play out practically well i think you're um you know you you've said this already it's very clear people uh can can communicate with each other uh through music without without a, a spoken language and it's a, it it really is a, a way of bringing uh human kind uh together i mean we in our in our travels we we get to do this a lot and it's uh you know one of the greatest joys sharing sharing music and seeing people react to music that they haven't heard before on instruments that they haven't heard before <coughs> but it's um you know the the emotion is conveyed and um you know it's it, it's very possible to communicate in a very very special way Sharon given the advent of racism and xenophobia in the world at large how do you view the universal universality of music i think it's absolutely vital that music and not just music but anything in the arts mm. continue around the world um because of this i think the the stranger the world is and it's a pretty strange place at the moment in particular i think the more important it is that people embrace music and the arts uh one thing that i i love about music is that it transcends all class and education i don't think one needs to be educated in classical music in order to enjoy it at all um i think that's one of the most wonderful things about um being able to travel to many different countries cultures uh performing not just in the large concert halls but also performing in once i performed in a pig shed in a farm um we performed an opera there and all the audience members they'd never even heard classical music before and they absolutely loved it i think it's so important that um people of all races genders class education are exposed to all sorts of music because it's really one of the truest ways of communicating with anyone around the world We're going for a short commercial break. We're in conversation with Slava and Sharon, two of Australia's leading classical musicians. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Newsline. We're in conversation with Slava Grigorian and Sharon Draper. Uh we were speaking about how music transcends all boundaries and the universality of it all. Um <clears throat> Slava, you're an award-winning guitarist. How have your travels been across the world? Well, I uh I moved uh I left Australia when I was uh 19 years old. So the year after I finished high school, uh I released my my first solo album and uh I moved to to England and I was based in in Europe for about 4 years where you know that was my first uh concentrated moment of of traveling a lot so I, I was based in london but i i played concerts all over europe and traveled back to australia regularly um but it, in in that time i was only playing by myself so very much a, a soloist and uh and playing a lot of repertoire for for just one guitar and as much as i loved it i also missed the company of other people um and it's a it's actually a very lonely existence um you're always on stage by yourself and uh uh and then after the concert you might say hello to a few people very briefly but then you know you wander back to the hotel on your own and next day you're traveling on your own it's uh i realized uh after about 4 years that i i really enjoyed sharing that time with with other people and around about the same time my my brother who's 9 years younger than me was establishing himself as a as a very good player and we started working together and that's still the the main um you know the main musical thing that that I focus on and nowadays it's lovely to be able to share it with my wife so how how did you guys meet well the music world is very small mm. 
the classical music world is very small. Um, and the first time we met, I was, I think, 18 or 19 years old, playing in the Australian Youth Orchestra, which is an incredible student orchestra um, with students from all around Australia joining up for two seasons a year. And the program we were performing had Slava as a soloist playing a guitar concerto. So that's the first time we met, um, and we kept on bumping into each other uh, with me playing in various different orchestras um, in the professional scene with Slava again coming and performing that same concerto. So we'd see each other once every couple of years or so, um, but actually we ended up together only three years ago in Adelaide. I'd moved to Adelaide from Melbourne for my job with the string quartet right. and Slava um, directs, he's the artistic director of the Adelaide International Guitar Festival mm -hmm. so he was often there anyway for work um, and that's, that's when it all started properly for us. Sharon, you have an interesting story about the cello. Mm. Uh, let's tell our audience about it. Well, this is a particularly special cello. It was made in 1743 in Italy in the town of Piacenza. And the, the maker's name is Guadagnini. Mm -hmm. um, and he's up there with uh, makers such as Stradivarius uh, in string instruments. And they're incredibly valuable pieces of art, these instruments, and absolutely irreplaceable, just like a, a Monet painting or sure. Picasso or something um, and hardly any musician performer can afford to buy one of these instruments ourselves so thanks to the generosity of um, a lady whose name is Ulrika Klein who headed up the Ukaria Cultural Foundation in Adelaide mm -hmm. she bought a set of four of these instruments two violins, a viola and a cello which are now on loan to the members of the Australian String Quartet so as long as I'm playing with that quartet I get to play this incredible cello All right. So I, I think we can go in for another um, piece. Sure. This one is the last movement of a set of five movements um, by the composer Granados. Um, and it's a sprightly little thing that we'll be performing later on tonight. fantastic. Uh, Slava, tell us, uh, do you see yourself um, going into Hollywood? I mean, we've seen how instrumental music is now on the rise, uh, with uh, instrumentals being recognized not just in the Grammys, but also in the Oscars, for example, the soundtracks. Mm. Do you guys see yourselves doing that? Well, I mean, this, you know, music is um, very... Uh, We've spoken about how universal it is, and the you know classical music. I mean, instrumental music in uh, in in film is very important. It's mm. always actually been around from from the earliest um, uh, you know periods of, of cinema, and and sure. nowadays it's getting more and more recognition. Uh, Sharon and I have both played on many soundtracks in the past, um, and. Uh, uh, more recently, my brother and, and I both composed music uh, as well, and uh, we've written some music for, for film as well. So it, it is something that um, uh, is always there as another creative outlet, and it's uh, certainly something very interesting for us. Well, we certainly mm. hope that yeah. you will get nominated for ah. an Oscar soon. <laughs> um, 
in five years, Sharon, where do you see yourself? Ooh, well, will I it be not within Australia? I think within or? Australia. Um, I think for me, one of the best outcomes for all of the travelling that I do. Um, I've also lived overseas for a little bit. I've lived in Croatia and Austria and Germany. Um, is it, it gives you perspective on the world and I also realise how lucky I am in Australia. Um, so I think I've, I see myself in a few years' time still living in Adelaide um, because it's always wonderful to travel but it's always wonderful to come home for me to Adelaide. Uh, and luckily for me, I think I've got the best job in this string quartet then you know I, I don't think I'll get better than that for myself so in five years or so still doing the same thing um, maybe hopefully playing a little bit more with Sava as a duo and possibly having a family as well by that stage but I think we're very lucky that we're already we're already doing what we want to be doing and I think we're both happy musically doing what we are doing now for many many years to come oh, how do you see the future of classical music and uh, don't you think that you the two of you could contribute towards its enhancement uh, in terms of uh, teaching students of music mm. what do you call it? Yeah. we do this we do this a lot I mean Sharon and I are a little bit different because we we play and perform all the time we're not um, locked in um, at an institution mm -hmm. as teachers but we certainly teach as much as we can when we're on the road we take lots of master classes and um, cellists and guitarists come and come and visit us for, for lessons whenever whenever we travel and we, we do um, teach at, at, at universities and, and conservatoriums and music schools in our in our travels and it's you know it is very important to uh, to, to continue this this language um, you know the, the the language of music is always evolving and changing but uh, you know there's always a, a place for, for these beautiful historical instruments and, and there's still so much being discovered about music that was composed two three four hundred years ago obviously longer as well but um, you know there's still so much music from that period that hasn't hasn't been looked at properly is yet to be discovered and uh, it's certainly not something that's been overdone it's it's an exciting time to be a, a classical musician I think it's also it's so important to continue teaching music as much as you can even if these students don't end up becoming professional cellists or guitarists it doesn't matter they could learn for two years and then quit it's okay as long as they enjoy it um, because the appreciation of music that they learn even in those few years before they become a doctor or a lawyer um, that will stay with them for life and continue to nourish their souls whether they end up playing or not when will we see you in Sri Lanka again hopefully hope. very soon very soon <laughs> I hope thank you for being right. with us for making this morning a musically beautiful uh, and you. we hope to see you again very soon. We hope to be here again very soon. Thanks so for thank you. Us. We uh, conclude this edition of Newsline with another piece. <laughs> ¶¶